Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to continue working on our 2006 GMC Sierra. Last time we got the door off, we got this pillar all pulled out, and we cut our rocker open so we could see what was inside. This time we're going to pull the bed off, we're going to start on our rocker, and we're going to throw our used door up on the front so we can get everything fitting up. Let's get to it. First thing we have to do is put on our front door so that we can make sure that B pillar is where it belongs. So we'll disconnect the wiring harness from the pillar, pull the kick panel down, wiring harness runs inside, and up the side of the dash. So we'll slide that out of there. And we can unbolt the door check and the two hinges and lift our door off. Now we're ready to put our used door up there. If you're wondering why my used door is white and not black, well, I sold my black door. I do sell parts. A lot of people are like, why do you sell parts that you might use? I can't keep everything. I've been doing this long enough to know a rust-free door like I had up here brings about $500. But down south, these doors are about 50 bucks. So I sold my door for 500 bucks. I picked this one up for $50 in Florida. Driving down to Florida to pick up a door might not sound like the best way to save money, but when you're paid to ship a car down there and you're bringing another car back, throwing a door in the back of your truck ends up saving you a bunch of money. I even stayed in Florida for a couple days. The pizza girl came with. And the most shocking part about that whole story, pizza girl brought pizza. Actually, she just ordered it and had it delivered. So I guess she really wasn't the pizza girl but she was responsible for the pizza. We'll fish our wires back through the cowl just so we don't pinch them in the opening. And we'll see how our door closes. It actually closes quite nicely. It means our pillar is pretty close. Still needs a little fine tuning. We'll put the back door on. We'll see how our gaps line up. By the time this is all said and done, I will have taken this door off, I don't know how many times, 10, 20. So you know how to do it by now. Set it down on the pins, put the two bolts in it so it doesn't fall on the floor. We left the door check out of the back door just to make this process a little faster. Well, it's not out of the back door, it's actually in the back door. We dropped it down inside. The color doesn't match at all. So now we're gonna take the bed off because I don't feel like doing any pulling work right now. The Scott powered ram is resting up. Unbolt the filler neck. We can unplug our taillights. Just one harness for each side. And we'll tuck the wires up inside the bed so they don't get snagged. And now we can get to our bed bolts. The two in the back go through the frame and the trailer hitch. We'll play a little game of Operation, the Mechanics Edition. No one's nose lights up if you touch the sides. You just get hit in the face with a bolt and dirt in your eyes. You know, someone should invent a device that would protect your eyes against such an event. And if such a device does exist, why has no one told me about it repeatedly in the comments? The frame on this truck has a little surface rust on it. The wax actually kind of melted off of it wherever the sun could hit it. It does have some rust. The actual metal of the rockers and everything else, very solid. Not worried about a little surface rust on the frame because up here in Illinois, we get that in about six months. So we'll unbolt all of our bolts. I think we got all our bolts. There's only six on this because the bed is only a 5'9 bed. And we're ready to lift our bed off with our mobile frame rack that's been repurposed. We'll violently swing the bed around and test the strength of that bed lift. It passed. So we'll set the bed down on the cart and we can shove it off in a corner out of the way. We'll let the bodywork gnome get to those dents. And we'll take our door off again. We haven't done this enough yet.
bolt our clamp up on the bottom of the B-pillar. And we'll use our Scott powered ram. Got my pulling face on. A little more stress relieving. We were close, but not perfect. Those are just rough pulls we did the last time. Now we're actually going to measure. Wow, I don't just guess. Ah, eh, sometimes I do. My guesses are pretty close. So we'll let the tension off of it, make sure that our measurements don't change. And according to the tape measure, it's right where it belongs. So we'll unbolt our clamp. Now we'll put our door back up, see how everything fits. We're not going to worry about the outer piece yet. It's only there for show, really. So we're going to change it all. We don't have to straighten it. We just need to get the inner pillar lined up with all the hinges so we know everything's in the right spot before we start cutting our pieces off. So our back door closes nice. So our front door. We have a nice even gap between the two doors from top to bottom. Our body lines are actually in the same spot, which if you've ever seen one of these trucks is quite amazing. Factory can't usually manage that. Our gap across the back is okay. Until we get towards the bottom. That cab corner's rolled a little bit. We're not going to worry about it since we're changing it all anyway. Now we have our rust-free parts. These actually came off that other truck. They're from Texas. And in case you're wondering why I don't just swap it, this is the other side of it. That B pillar's in pretty good. Those doors are destroyed, rockers destroyed, roofs buckled. This thing's good for parts. So we're just going to cut off what we need. And through the magic of video editing, we did just that. We cut more than we actually needed so that we get back there, we can have a little extra, plenty of room to work in case we decide we want to put it in somewhere else. We have the inner rocker, the outer rocker, and the cab corner, and a couple little filler pieces. And yes, that is the Black Sierra. I actually put my builds to work. The pizza girl let me borrow it for the day. So now we're going to, uh, guess what? Take the door off again. The most important part of this process, gotta make the face. Pull our weather stripping off the top of the door. And we'll put a tape line up where we're gonna cut it. I don't always use tape lines, but it does kind of keep me going straight. So we're going to cut the top of our cab corner. When we cut the top, we don't want to cut all the way through because the piece underneath we're not going to replace up this high. On the back side where there's nothing underneath it, we can cut all the way through. So grind off all of our spot welds. And we'll drill the ones in the back cab panel. Not sure why I decided to drill these and grind the other ones. 
change of pace. We'll scrape off some of the seam sealer so we can see the spot welds that are underneath. Couple more spot welds. And now we can start knocking it apart. Got a fancy repurposed scraper and my body hammer just to drive the tool experts nuts. Peel the cab corner back. It's kind of hard to get in there because that seam in the back is kind of in a channel. So we'll just peel it back and then we can get in it from the top or the inside, whatever. Try not to do a lot of damage, then we have to fix it. Now we'll use our sophisticated cut alignment system. Mark this inner piece. We'll cut it a little bit lower. We want to stagger our cuts. We don't just take a sawzall and cut straight through. I know a lot of people seem to think that's how you do it, but it's not. I mean, you could, but it definitely makes a weak spot. We'll cut our piece off of there. And we'll grind out our spot welds around the door jam. These panels are pretty easy to take off. Drill out these. Knock the ones off the bottom. And we'll just peel this piece off. Still no gloves. How does he do it? Turns out being thick skinned isn't just a metaphor. So we'll use our breaker, break all the spot welds loose till we get to the end. We'll just trim this little piece off. We'll mark our cut at the front of the rocker. I basically decided to go where the damage stopped. A little past it. That way I don't have to worry about straightening any of that. And it's only a couple more spot welds. Now for the B-pillar, I decided to stay underneath the hinges because we already had the hinges aligned, the B-pillar where it belonged. So if we don't disturb any of that, everything should line up. So we'll drill out our spot welds, grind out the bottom, because I didn't feel like having to push up on the drill. And now we can get our reciprocating saw out and cut our rocker. Since there's nothing inside, it's pretty easy just to cut straight through. We'll cut our B-pillar. There's no panels inside there. There is a little block off plate. We're gonna change it because ours was smashed. I saved it off our parts car. It's actually plastic. Just by using a reciprocating saw, it actually broke all the spot welds loose. That happens once in a while. But not the bottom. So we're gonna peel the bottom down and hit it with the air chisel. Bottom's a little thicker. The B pillar, you can see there's a line there. Oh, we didn't grind quite enough. But the air chisel will get it. Might leave some little pieces on there. We'll just grind off whatever's left. Toss that in a pile.
Now we're going to scribe our inner piece here. The rear inner piece overlaps the front inner piece, so we'll be able to put it right back where it was. Pop our little plug out of there. And we'll scribe the line inside here. Get us centered around that. And here's our little plastic pieces that seal off the bottom of the rocker. I'm just wrapped in foam, but they are kind of bent. We need that one out of the way so we can drill out these spot welds. No hammering required. Little slide hammer. Instead of knocking all these spot welds out, just tear them out. So much faster. A couple of them didn't want to come out, so we'll use our breaker. In the pile. Now we're going to clean up whatever burrs are left from our drilling. Whatever little pieces of the spot weld still remain. Get all of our paint off of there so we can get some nice quality welds. Clean up the back of the cab and we'll clean up these spots on the inside. We have a small deburring tip on our die grinder. We use it to kind of get in there and make sure we can get all that paint off of there. Now we're going to do the same thing on our piece that we're putting in. Clean up all the spot welds. This side, we're going to do both sides on this one. Flip it over. Clean up the rest of them. We're only going to put our weld through primer on the one side. But we want both sides cleaned up. Now you can put our weld through primer on. We only put it on one side because it's only meant to go between the two panels. And this will be the extent of my paintwork on the truck. Now we'll put our weld through primer on the truck itself. And we'll put our piece up there. We'll line up those lines that we scribed in there. Should get us pretty close. There's quite a big tolerance on this piece. So even if both trucks were welded together in different locations, this piece will still be in spec. Tap it up into place. Put it right back where it was. Put a few clamps on it. The more clamps we can put on it, the more we can weld without having to stop and move clamps around. Clamp up that support underneath. One more in the front. We're out of clamps. Time to weld. So we're just going to weld up all of our holes. A little here, a little there. Not everything in one area. We want to keep the piece as cool as possible. So we'll weld all around it. Then when we're done welding, we're going to go find the roaming gnome, have him scuff it all down and prime that inside piece that we're never going to see again, just so it won't rust. While he's doing that, I'm going to come over and mark our new piece for the outside. I just overlaid the piece I cut off, clamped it down, and then started scribing it. I trimmed this one to fit so it would fit a little bit better. There's little notches in it that'll line you up. You can't go by the spot welds. Every spot welds in a different place. Now we can use our saw. Cut this piece off right on our line. And we'll use the rest of the piece to make a backing for the front. 
We're actually going to put this piece on three different ways. The front we're going to use a butt weld with a backing. The B pillar, we're just going to butt the pieces up because we can get to the inside. And if we have to, we can weld it up. And for the C pillar, we're going to overlap it. We'll put this piece up under the other one. Watch your toes. So now we're going to cut our C pillar. We have our old piece. We're going to scribe a line. Now we're actually going to cut a little bit on the other side of the line. That'll give us enough that we can overlap it. Hold the piece and chase it around the stand for a little bit. You can see our line. You can see I cut a, about a half inch higher. That line that I drew will actually line up with the piece I already cut on the truck. I'm going to clean all our paint off of there so we have something to weld to. And we'll put weld through primer because this will be under the other piece. We'll clean up the back side of the other piece and the front. And we'll clean up all of our spot welds. We'll get this up on the truck. And you've seen it before, so you're not going to see that again. So the roaming gnome was here. You can see our inner rocker is all primed. Now we're going to take out this little plastic filler piece. It has two Christmas trees that hold it in. And then they put foam in it that holds it into place. Pops little Christmas trees out of there. And we'll put our new one in that's not all distorted. Put it in there. Later on, we'll come back with the foam and make sure it's not going anywhere. There's our little piece in the back. Slide that one in. Now we're ready to put our outer rocker up there. Front goes over our backing. Our B pillar just butts up against the other one. And our C pillar we just slide up underneath. Clamp it up, move it around wherever we need it to be. more clamps on the bottom. A little bit of adjustment. And we're going to put the door back on. Make sure everything lines up like it's supposed to. I'll make sure our gap across the bottom is right. So you put the rocker on and it's too high or too low, that gap won't be even. And you can't really change it once you weld it up. So, we'll check it now. gap is good between the two doors. The front door closes nice. Our back door, not so much. We gotta move the striker around a little bit. Since this piece was from the other truck, it might have been adjusted differently. Chances are, it was OEM and wrong to begin with. So we'll make it right. 
You can see the back plate as I loosen it up, moves down. Nothing holds that in. So if you want to pull the striker out of one of these, you're going to have to go find that little piece if you pull both bolts out. Luckily, there are some holes in the C-pillar so you can actually get to it. I've had a couple cars where you drop that piece in there and you have to turn the car upside down and shake it to get it back out. So we'll clamp everything up. I do have a port of power on that B-pillar because that outer panel is thicker and it provides some support. Without it, the pillar kind of collapses. So that ram just holds everything right where it belongs. It basically replaces the piece I took out. We don't want to take that piece out, line everything up, close our doors and find out our pillar is too short. So a couple of adjustments on this striker and we'll try our door again. Latches, closes pretty good. So we'll take the door off, weld it all up. Now we're going to put the door back up now that everything's welded. We need to put it up there so we can put our cab corner on. We need to know where our body lines go. Still closes nice. And just a little tip if you're making videos, it's always good to press the record button uh, when you're recording. I neglected to do that, so through the magic of video editing or lack thereof, our cab corner is up there. We did this one with a backing at the top, and that was the only part that we actually had to section. The rest of it was all put in the factory locations. So we just put our little piece in there, welded around it, welded all our spot welds across the back, across the inside, and a couple in the bottom. So now we're going to pull our door off, we're going to hand it over to the painting gnome. He actually already started grinding some of this down. And hopefully, this is the last time I have to take this door off. So that's all we have time for today. We have our cab pieces all welded in. We're going to wait for the bodywork gnomes to come in here and put a little body filler on where we ground down these seams. Make them look like they're supposed to, so you can't even tell they were there. Uh, next time we come back, we'll hopefully have it all back together and ready for paint. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.